According to Bloomberg, the boost to South Korean stocks from the nation's move to ban short selling has quickly faded, with an index of small cap stocks on course to erase all the gains seen following the regulator's surprise decision. The COSDAQ index slid as much as 1.9% Monday, falling in every single session since the ban triggered a 7.3% jump on November 6. If the day's losses hold, the index will close at levels seen before the curb came into effect. Electric vehicle battery names including Ecopro BM Company, Ecopro Company and LF Company have been the biggest drags on the gauge over the past week. According to Reuters, the cyber hack of Industrial and Commercial Bank of China's U.S. broker-dealer was so extensive on Wednesday, even the corporate email stopped working and forced employees to switch to Google Mail, according to two people familiar with the situation. The blackout left the brokerage temporarily owing BNY Mellon $9 billion, an amount many times larger than its net capital, a measure of resources at hand to promptly satisfy claims. According to Reuters, Banks on the payment app Zelle have begun refunding victims of imposter scams to address consumer protection concerns raised by U.S. lawmakers and the federal consumer watchdog, in a major policy change. The 2,100 financial firms on Zelle, a peer-to-peer -peer network owned by seven banks including J.P. Morgan Chase and Bank of America, began reversing transfers as of June 30 for customers duped into sending money to scammers claiming to be from a government agency, bank or existing service provider said Early Warning Services, the bank's company that owns Zelle. According to Bloomberg, shares in Asia weakened slightly after early gains, with key U.S. inflation data due Tuesday and a summit between Joe Biden and Xi Jinping later this week dominating investors' attention. Stocks in Hong Kong, mainland China and Australia edged lower, with those in Japan and South Korea steady. U.S. equities futures fell, following a tech-led rally on Wall Street Friday. Markets are closed in Singapore and Malaysia for a holiday. According to Reuters, Kenya has appointed City and Standard Bank as joint lead managers to assess the potential of borrowing in dollars in international markets, the finance ministry said. Any transaction or transactions will be subject to market conditions, it said in a statement on its website late on Sunday. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. conducted airstrikes in eastern Syria on targets linked to Iran. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said, while President Joe Biden spoke with Qatar's ruler about trying to secure the release of hostages in the Gaza Strip. Israel's military pressed on with its offensive against Hamas, designated a terrorist organization by the U.S. and European Union, engaging in ground battles in a district in northern Gaza that also contains Shati refugee camp, the third largest in the enclave. Israel says it killed militants in the area, which is in a zone it has told civilians to leave. According to Reuters, Chinese chipmaker Yangtze Memory Technologies County has filed a lawsuit against U.S. rival Micron Technology alleging infringement of eight of its patents. YMTC filed the lawsuit against Micron and Unit Micron Consumer Products Group on November 9 at the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California. According to Reuters, the United Auto Workers laborers at Ford's Louisville Assembly and Kentucky truck plants have voted against a proposed four-and-a-half-year contract, while the skilled trades workers voted in favor of the deal, the union's local unit said on Facebook. The UAW Local 862 union said that 55% of the production workers voted against ratifying the contract. However, 69% of the skilled trades workers cast votes in favor of the contract. According to Bloomberg, Alibaba Group Holding Limited and JD.com Inc. reported sales increases during China's most important shopping festival, yet likely lagged newer entrants from social media platforms like ByteDance Limited's Douyin during a muted year for consumer spending. Analysts hunted for clues after China's two e-commerce leaders again failed to disclose overall revenue numbers during Singles Day, the annual bargains extravaganza built around the November 11 event that Alibaba popularized over a decade ago. Historically used as a barometer for Chinese consumer sentiment, it's become much harder to parse since companies stopped providing precise figures during the COVID era. According to Bloomberg, Dubai kickstarted its privatization program after a one-year hiatus with the planned initial public offering of its taxi business, as share sales gather pace in the United Arab Emirates in the final weeks of 2023. The Dubai government will sell a 25% stake in Dubai Taxi Company in the domestic listing 
amounting to 624.75 million shares, according to an advertisement in Gulf News on Monday. The price range will be announced on November 21. According to Bloomberg, oil held three weeks of declines as traders wait for industry reports to confirm whether the recent run lower has been overdone. Brent crude slipped toward $81 a barrel, after losing about 12% over the past three weeks on growing concerns over global demand and the unwinding of the Israel-Hamas war's risk premium. West Texas Intermediate traded below $77. OPEC will publish its monthly oil market report on Monday followed this week by the International Energy Agency and two weeks' worth of U.S. inventory data. According to Reuters, a tick-up in U.S. Treasury yields on Monday helped send the dollar to a fresh one-year high against the yen, while scuppering an early tech-led equity rally. Benchmark 10-year Treasury yields pushed to a one-week high of 4.668%, testing the top of its range since soft non-farm payroll figures at the start of the month stoked bets for earlier Federal Reserve rate cuts. According to Reuters, economic growth among Asia-Pacific economic cooperation countries is expected to decline next year and remain below the global average as higher interest rates slow U.S. growth, as China continues to struggle with its recovery and tensions between the two hamper trade, the body said on Sunday. The APEC Secretariat's Policy Support Unit issued new forecasts on the eve of the APEC Leaders Summit in San Francisco, showing that the 21-country region's growth rate would dip to 2.8% in 2024 from 3.3% in 2023. According to Reuters, Volkswagen could cut administrative personnel jobs as part of savings and cost-cutting measures amounting to €10 billion Euros by 2026, the Handelsblatt Daily reported on Monday, citing an internal company podcast. Administrative personnel costs are to be reduced by a fifth by 2026, with staff reductions likely part of the measures, Handelsblatt reported, citing the internal podcast with human resources head Gunnar Killian and brand boss Thomas Schaefer. According to Bloomberg, pension giant Australian Super turned down a new approach to join a Brookfield Asset Management and EIG Global Energy Partners led $19.4 billion Australian dollars takeover of Utility Origin Energy Limited. The country's largest pension fund, which is Origin's biggest investor with 15.3% of shares, rejected an 11th hour and unsolicited letter from the private equity firms and reaffirmed that it will be voting against the proposed acquisition. According to Reuters, Australian telecoms provider Optus said on Monday that a massive outage which effectively cut off 40% of the country's population and triggered a political firestorm was caused by changes to routing information after a routine software upgrade. More than 10 million Australians were hit by the 12-hour network blackout at the Singapore telecommunications-owned telco on November 8, triggering fury and frustration among customers and raising wider concerns about the telecommunications infrastructure. According to Reuters, Greece's state-controlled bank bailout fund HFSF said on Monday it sold its 9% stake in Alpha Bank to Unicredit after an improved bid by the Italian bank. Unicredit announced last month it would become Alpha Bank's biggest investor by buying a 9% stake owned by Greece's HFSF and also agreed to acquire most of Alpha's Romanian business. According to Bloomberg, Thailand's Prime Minister Sretha Thavison defended a controversial plan to borrow billions of dollars to fund a cash handout program, saying Southeast Asia's second-largest economy is in a crisis and needed a stimulus to end a cycle of low single-digit growth. Sretha's administration last week unveiled plans to distribute 10,000 baht each to about 50 million Thais as a one-time measure to stimulate consumption and spur business activities. The so-called digital wallet program that will cost 500 billion baht will be funded through state borrowing and a special bill will be passed by parliament early next year to facilitate the fundraising, according to Sretha. According to Reuters, Japanese government bond yields rose on Monday, tracking U.S. short-term bond yields that gained at the end of last week, as investors bet the Bank of Japan may end its negative rate policy soon. The 10-year JGB yield rose to as high as 0.895%, its highest level since November 2, and was last at 0.880%, down three basis points from the previous session. According to Bloomberg, cyber-catastrophe bonds may be about to move out of the shadows of private deal-making and into the public debt markets. So-called cat bonds, which farm out hard to ensure risks to capital market investors in exchange for double-digit returns, 
have typically been built around natural disasters such as hurricanes. But as the potential fallout of business halting cyber attacks becomes too big to ensure, issuers are seizing the moment. According to Reuters, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin on Monday left open the possibility of more strikes against Iran-linked groups if attacks against American forces in Iraq and Syria don't stop, hours after overnight U.S. airstrikes in Syria. The U.S. military carried out its third airstrike in as many weeks in Syria late on Sunday, targeting a training facility near the city of Abu Kamal and a safe house near the city of Mayadeen. According to Reuters, Citadel Securities, one of the world's biggest market-making firms, is actively exploring, establishing a licensed onshore business in China, its chief executive Peng Zhao said. If Citadel Securities were to obtain a license, it would be the first foreign firm to formally foray into market-making in China outside interbank and foreign exchange market-making. According to Reuters, the Russian ruble was little changed in morning trade on Monday, restrained by a drop in oil prices while waiting for more support from exporters' foreign currency sales. At 0729 GMT, the ruble was 0.1% stronger against the dollar at 92.23 and had lost 0.1% to trade at 98.68 versus the euro. It was unchanged against the yuan at 12.61. According to Reuters, Exhibition stands for Israeli weapons makers Israel Aerospace Industries and Rafael Advanced Defense Systems were empty at the start of the opening day of the week-long Dubai Airshow on Monday, amid the Israel-Hamas war in Gaza. Israeli companies have only formally participated at conferences and exhibitions in the United Arab Emirates since 2020, when the Gulf Arab power established ties with Israel. According to Reuters, DD Global, China's largest ride-hailing company, on Monday reported its first quarterly profit since 2021, adding to signs of its comeback from regulatory challenges as domestic demand for mobility services continues to recover. Didi Global reported net income attributable to shareholders of 107 million yuan in the three-month period ended September 30, versus a loss of 2 billion yuan a year ago. Revenue in the reported quarter jumped 25% to 51.40 billion yuan. According to Reuters, Financials Acquisition Corp. said on Monday it would enter liquidation as it scraps a planned merger with its newly formed insurance venture, citing insufficient cash commitments due to volatile capital markets. The special purpose acquisition company had unveiled plans to combine with London Innovation Underwriters and raise additional funds to deploy in the Lloyds of London insurance market. According to Bloomberg, emerging market borrowers are piling back into global bond markets selling about $20 billion in dollar notes in just a few days, all too aware that the window of opportunity may snap shut as suddenly as it opened. Countries from Colombia to Indonesia and developing nation companies rushed to lock in lower borrowing costs, taking advantage of a respite in conditions amid signals the Federal Reserve may be close to winding up its aggressive interest rate hikes. That, combined with cooling jobs growth in the world's largest economy, helped bring down U.S. Treasury yields from a 16-year high allowing a swath of deals that have been on pause to come to market. According to Reuters, British petrol station operator EG Group will buy Tesla's ultra-fast charging units to help roll out its electric vehicle charging network across Europe, it said on Monday. EG, owned by the billionaire ESA brothers who also own UK supermarket Asda, said it was aiming to expand its charging network from over 600 chargers currently deployed to more than 20,000 chargers at its own sites over time. According to Bloomberg, look no further than China's biggest live streamer for a snapshot of the country's flagging consumption outlook. Li Jiaqi, known as Lipstick King, for his prowess in selling cosmetics, recorded sales of 9.5 billion yuan on October 24, the first day of the annual Singles Day shopping festival that ended on Saturday, according to a Southern Metropolis Daily report, which didn't say where it got the information. That's down from last year's first day tally of 21.5 billion yuan, it said. According to Bloomberg, Goldman Sachs Group Inc. lowered its rating on Hong Kong traded China stocks due to low earnings growth and a potential consensus downgrade. The bank upgraded shares in India, citing the market's strategic appeal. With valuations generally at fair levels relative to the macro backdrop, we expect earnings to be the main driver of returns, strategists including Timothy Moe wrote in a note, referring to Asia markets.
The investment bank cut Hong Kong listed Chinese companies to market weight and Hong Kong firms to underweight. According to Bloomberg, Mizuo Financial Group Inc. raised its full-year profit forecast after first-half results were buoyed by gains in investment banking and trading, along with a cheaper yen. Japan's third-largest lender now expects net income of 640 billion yen for the year ending March 31, which would be the highest in eight years. That compares with the average analyst estimate of 634 billion yen and Mizuho's previous forecast of 610 billion yen. According to Bloomberg, Total Energy's SE agreed to buy three natural gas-fired power plants in Texas from TexGen Power LLC for $635 million as it looks to expand in the U.S. market. The three plants will serve the fast-growing energy demand of Dallas and Houston, offsetting the intermittency of renewable power production, the French energy giant said in a statement Monday, confirming an earlier Bloomberg News report. They have a capacity of 1.5 gigawatts. According to Reuters, Dubai plans to offer 25% of shares in its taxi business through an initial public offering, the company said in a statement on Monday, the latest public share sale is part of a broader privatization program of state assets. Dubai Taxi Company, the largest taxi operator in the Gulf City state by market share, will offer 624.8 million shares, which are expected to list on the Dubai financial market in December. According to Bloomberg, a possible downgrade of Italy to junk this week would be hugely symbolic, potentially consequential, and very controversial. The unprecedented branding of a group of seven economy as a substantial credit risk could be delivered by Moody's Investors Service, whose BA3 rating for the country is at the lowest rung of investment grade, with a negative outlook. According to Bloomberg, European Central Bank Vice President Luis de Guindas warned that consumer price growth may pick up again temporarily though its prevailing direction is downwards. Speaking to the Frankfurt Euro Finance Week on Monday, he said that the Eurozone economy will stay subdued for now though it should then strengthen again, while there are signs that the labor market is starting to weaken. According to Reuters, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak sacked his interior minister, Suella Braverman, on Monday, a government source said, part of a wider reshuffle after she criticized the police's handling of a pro-Palestinian march under fire from opposition lawmakers and members of his own governing Conservative Party to eject Braverman, Sunak moved against his interior minister, asking her to leave government, which she had accepted, the source said. According to Reuters, over 30 clearing houses from across the world will participate in their biggest fire drill to date over the coming week to simulate how they would deal with defaulting members, the European Union's securities watchdog said on Monday. Clearers a critical part of the financial market's basic plumbing, are backed by default funds to ensure a stock, bond or derivatives trade is completed, even if one side of the transaction goes bust. According to Reuters, China's finance ministry has proposed that auditors undergo or conduct additional cybersecurity checks when their work involves national security. The new draft measures, which were made public on Friday, also lay out how accounting firms should manage data that relate Chinese firms. According to Reuters, Porsche SE said on Monday that net liquidity had improved to a deficit of 5.8 billion euros as of the end of September from minus 6.7 billion euros at the start of 2023, helped by tax refunds totaling some 500 million euros. Volkswagen's controlling shareholder said it thus expected net liquidity at the end of this year to be in the upper half of the forecast range of minus 6.1 billion euros to minus 5.6 billion euro. According to Reuters, Saudi Arabia's newest airline Riyadh Air is still in talks with planemakers to place an order for narrow body jets, its chief operating officer said on Monday. The airline, owned by the kingdom's sovereign wealth fund and due to start operations in 2025, said this month it would buy a sizable number of narrow body jets in the coming weeks. According to Reuters, Sterling was a touch firmer against the euro and dollar on Monday after British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak sacked his interior minister, Suella Braverman, a government source said. The moves in currency markets were modest and analysts said the direction for sterling in the near term would be driven by economic data and the outlook for the US dollar. According to Reuters, Sun Express Airlines, a joint venture between Turkish Airlines and Lufthansa, 
placed the first order at the Dubai Air Show on Monday and used the spotlight to remind Boeing to deliver on time after a series of industry delays. The budget carrier said it was placing a firm order for 45 narrow-body 737 MAX jets to be delivered between 2029 and 2035, with options or purchase rights for another 45. According to Reuters, most emerging market stocks edged up on Monday ahead of a keenly anticipated consumer price index reading out of the U.S., while Sri Lanka's stocks and rupee were steady after the government laid out its budget for 2024. Mischi's gauge for emerging markets equities rose 0.5%, snapping a four-day losing streak underpinned by a 2.3% gain in Hong Kong's tech sector. According to Bloomberg, General Atlantic has reached a deal to acquire control of Joe the Juice, the high street chain that sells smoothies and sandwiches to young professionals and hipsters. The U.S. private equity group, already a minority shareholder, agreed to buy the stake held by Swedish firm Valedo Partners, which is exiting its investment, General Atlantic said in a statement Monday. Financial details weren't disclosed. According to Bloomberg, investors are overly concerned about the weakening outlook for U.S. corporate earnings, which so far merely track a historical pattern, according to Goldman Sachs Group Inc. strategists. Estimates for fourth quarter profits have dropped by 4% since the start of October and are setting a low bar for SP500 companies, David Costin and his colleagues wrote. Expectations for 2024 are also following a typical pattern and only dip 0.4% once healthcare, the significant drag, is excluded, they said. According to Bloomberg, Sri Lanka is likely to raise taxes and curb spending in its annual budget to meet the International Monetary Fund's conditions and maintain a $3 billion bailout, but elections next year might see the government delay some reforms. President Ranil Wickremesinghe is expected to announce a narrower budget deficit from the last fiscal year's target of 7.9% of gross domestic product and lay out a roadmap to boost investments to aid economic recovery. Wickremesinghe, who is also the finance minister, needs to win over voters ahead of presidential elections due in 2024. According to Reuters, former British leader David Cameron was named as the country's new foreign secretary on Monday, in a surprise appointment made by Prime Minister Rishi Sunak as he reshuffled his top team. David Cameron, 57, served as British Prime Minister from 2010 to 2016, resigning after the outcome of the Brexit referendum, when Britain voted to leave the European Union. According to Bloomberg, bondholders in WOM Saw are getting burned as the upstart company that grabbed more than a quarter of Chile's mobile phone market in less than a decade finally seems to have bitten off more than it can chew. Its dollar debt due 2024 and 2028 has the worst month-to-date returns of any hard currency bonds issued by Chilean corporates, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. The 2024s have fallen 5.7%, while its 2028s have dropped 7.1%. The 2028's yield rose to 23.8% from 14.7% a year ago. According to Yahoo Finance, a big Wall Street bank is wrestling with investor concerns, a disappointing earnings result and regulatory headaches. It's not just Goldman Sachs that fits this description. It's also Morgan Stanley. According to Bloomberg, China's consumption rebound slowed and private business confidence lost momentum in October according to independent surveys and alternative data that suggested the economic recovery remains bumpy. An indicator of Chinese consumer demand for recreation and transport published by Paris-based Quant Cube Technology, along with an independent survey of consumer sentiment by U.S. company Morning Consult, both fell in October from the previous month. A poll of private business sentiment from the Chung Kong Graduate School of Business also declined in the month. According to Reuters, J.P. Morgan's Jamie Dimon and Goldman Sachs' David Solomon will attend Britain's Global Investment Summit on November 27, the government said on Monday, as it seeks to attract greater global capital to UK companies and markets. Blackstone Chief Executive Stephen Schwartzman is also expected to join Prime Minister Rishi Sunak for a keynote panel at the event, which is expected to draw more than 200 of the world's top business leaders. According to Reuters, European stocks started on a strong footing on Monday after Wall Street's positive close on Friday, with focus turning to U.S. inflation data for more clues on whether interest rates have peaked. 
Mischi's gauge of global equities rose 0.2% to a four-week high of 667.7 and the Pan-European Stocks 600 Index gained 0.8%. According to Bloomberg, the US and Indonesia are discussing the potential for cooperation on critical mineral supplies, senior officials said ahead of a White House meeting between the two countries' leaders. Both sides are expected to announce a joint initiative when Presidents Joe Biden and Joko Widodo meet on Monday, according to the officials, who cautioned that the discussions are at an early stage. The talks will focus on the possibility of moving toward a critical minerals agreement between the two countries, they said. According to Bloomberg, Apple Inc.'s sales dip in China is providing an opportunity for yet another local Android smartphone maker to win favor with customers and investors. Xiaomi Corp has gained about $20 billion in market value since a June low on excitement over its latest handset as well as its forays into electric vehicles and other businesses. The Hong Kong-listed stock rose more than 60% in that span, making it the best performer on the Hang Seng Tech Index. According to Bloomberg, emerging market stocks rose for the first time in five days amid signs of improving corporate performance in Asia and a thaw in U.S.-China relations. The benchmark MSCI Emerging Markets Index rebounded above its 50-day moving average, with Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company contributing a third of the gauge's gains after posting the first monthly sales increase since February. Alibaba Group Holdings Limited and JD.com Inc. advanced after posting an increase at the November 11 Singles Day shopping event. According to Bloomberg, Costas Bintas, the former co-head of metals at commodity trading giant Trafagora Group, is leaving the company after being demoted in a September reshuffle that capped a turbulent year for the division. Bintas, who built Trafagora's copper trading book into the world's largest and is a long-standing and vocal bull on metals markets, is leaving the company by mutual consent, according to a person familiar with the matter. He will be on gardening leave with immediate effect, the person said. According to Reuters, TikTok has been holding talks with Indonesian e-commerce companies about possible partnerships, an Indonesian minister said on Monday, a month after Southeast Asia's largest economy banned online shopping on social media platforms. TikTok has spoken with five companies including Goto's e-commerce unit Tokopedia, Bukalapak.com and Blibli, according to Tetan Mastuki, Minister for Small-Medium Enterprises. According to Reuters, Panama's top court is likely to rule against Canadian miner First Quantum when it decides on the fate of a key copper mine contract in the coming weeks, a majority of lawyers in a Reuters survey said, citing precedent for a similar verdict. The court's nine judges are weighing whether to revoke First Quantum's contract for the Cobra Panama mine, a significant resource that contributes 5% to Panama's GDP and 1% to global copper production. According to Reuters, Washington's decision to accept beef from Paraguay after 25 years will probably not change the overall volume of U.S. imports, even at a time of tight supplies and high prices, due to a quota on shipments, U.S. meat importers said. U.S. beef prices set records this year after drought drove ranchers to reduce the country's herd to its smallest level in decades, and meat companies are relying more on imports to process into ground beef for hamburgers. According to Reuters, the return of North American flights to Asia-Pacific is accelerating heading into 2024, as carriers bet on the region as the next source of high-margin revenue at a time of soaring costs. A rebound in Asia is especially important for airlines where long-haul travel makes up a bigger mix of revenue. Carriers tapped pent-up demand last summer with sky-high fares on flights to Europe, but a return of those prices may not be in the cards next year as capacity grows, some analysts said. According to Reuters, the European Union will make a substantial financial contribution to a new international fund addressing the destruction caused by climate change, the European Commission said on Monday. The Commissioner is ready to announce substantial financial contribution by the EU and its member states to the Loss Damage Fund at COP28, the Commission said in a statement, referring to EU Climate Commissioner Wapke Hoekstra. According to Reuters, Fledgling U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Mike Johnson faces his first big legislative battle this week as his tries to marshal his fractious Republican majority into supporting an unconventional plan to avert a partial government shutdown beginning on Saturday. Some House Republican hardliners were already pushing back at Johnson's proposal for a two-step stopgap bill that would not otherwise cut spending, 
a clean bill of the kind that led to the historic ouster of Johnson's predecessor, Kevin McCarthy. According to Reuters, U.S. stock index futures edged lower on Monday as investors awaited economic data later this week that could shape expectations around how long the Federal Reserve will keep interest rates elevated. The benchmark SP500 in the blue chip Dow closed at near eight week highs on Friday, while the tech heavy Nasdaq composite hit a two month peak as megacap stocks rallied on the back of easing Treasury yields. According to Reuters, Canadian miner First Quantum Minerals said on Monday it had reduced ore processing at its mine in Panama as protests against the project were causing blockades at a port. Protesters have expressed concerns over a mining contract signed between the government and the company late last month, arguing that it was tainted with corruption and was highly favorable to the Canadian miner. According to Reuters, negotiators working on the world's first treaty to curb plastic pollution need to hurry up and strike a deal. Kenya's President William Ruto said on Monday at the start of talks in Nairobi. The world produces about 400 million metric tons of plastic waste a year and less than 10% of it is recycled, according to the UN Environment Programme. According to Reuters, dental products distributor Henry Schein Inc. cut its adjusted 2023 profit forecast on Monday after a cyber attack it reported in October disrupted its manufacturing and distribution divisions. Shares of the company fell 3.3% in pre-market trading to $61.94. According to Reuters, state-controlled power group EDF and the French government have agreed on €70 Euros per megawatt hour as a reference level for future prices of nuclear power, a source close to the government said on Monday. The deal ends months of fraught negotiations between EDF, which is eager to maximize revenues to fund investments, and the government which wants to keep electricity bills for French households and businesses as low as possible. According to Reuters, the European Union will make a substantial financial contribution to a new international fund addressing the destruction caused by climate change, the EU's Executive Commission said on Monday. The World First Climate, Loss and Damage Fund is set to be launched during the United Nations COP28 Climate Summit, which will be held from November 30 to December 12 in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. According to Reuters, Tyson Foods on Monday forecast revenue for its next fiscal year below Wall Street estimates after missing fourth-quarter revenue expectations, hit by falling chicken and pork prices as well as slowing demand for its beef products. Shares of the company fell 1.2% in pre-market trade. According to Bloomberg, First Quantum Minerals Limited has reduced operations at its flagship copper project in Panama, which is facing a groundswell of local opposition, after a blockade by small boats at its port affected delivery of key supplies. The Canadian miner has found itself at the center of a political storm in the Central American country after thousands of protesters took to the street over an extension to its mining license. Under pressure from those demonstrators, President Laurentino Cortizo turned against the project at the end of last month saying a referendum would be held on its future. According to Reuters, the chief executive of Royal Jordanian said on Monday the Israel-Hamas war in Gaza was leading to some cancellations in bookings and making it operate longer, costlier flights, which could hurt the airline's profitability in the fourth quarter. The airline made a nine-month profit of 10.7 million Jordanian dinars and prior to the war expected the last quarter to increase profitability. According to Reuters, Wall Street is bracing for another quarter of week sales from U.S. home improvement chains Home Depot and Lowe's as demand remained under pressure from uneven consumer spending and a subdued housing market. Expectations have been revised roughly 17% lower for Home Depot's same store sales for the third quarter compared to early September, LSCG data showed, while estimates for Lowe's have come down about 19% during the same period. According to Reuters, as the holiday shopping season approaches, major U.S. retailers from Dollar General to Walmart and Macy's could be saddled with too much stock for a second straight year, according to a Reuters analysis, jeopardizing retailers' profit margins and generating steep discounts for shoppers. LSEG Workspace, a financial news and data platform, calculated inventory turnover ratios of 30 major U.S. retailers for Reuters. To determine which chains are most vulnerable to carrying excess stock, a problem that raises retailers' costs, LSEG divided each retailer's cost of goods sold by the average value of its inventory in the second quarter. 
According to Reuters, British Environment Secretary Therese Coffey resigned on Monday as Prime Minister Rishi Sunak reshuffled his top team of ministers. I consider it is now the right time to step back from government, Coffey said in a letter to Sunak which was published by his office. According to Reuters, global stocks traded cautiously on Monday as focus turned to U.S. inflation data for more clues on whether global interest rates really have peaked. After two weeks of gains, MSCI's gauge of global equities rose 0.2% and futures pricing indicated a flat open for Wall Street's benchmark SP500 share index. According to Reuters, rising demand for liquefied natural gas in the top importing regions of Asia and Europe hasn't been enough to spark an increase in spot prices, which continue to languish. The price of spot LNG for delivery to North Asia slipped to $16.50 per million British thermal units in the week to November 10, down from $17 the prior week. According to Reuters, safety testing group UL Solutions on Monday made public its paperwork for a U.S. initial public offering, disclosing a rise in revenue for the first nine months of the year. The Illinois-based company, owned solely by UL Standards Engagement, had confidentially filed for an IPO last month. According to Reuters, an expansion of central clearing in the U.S. Treasury's market would reduce liquidity risks associated with a popular hedge fund arbitrage trading strategy that could strain the broader financial markets if it unravels abruptly, said Moody's. So-called basis trades in U.S. Treasuries take advantage of the premium of futures contracts over the price of the underlying bonds. The trades, typically the domain of macro hedge funds with relative value strategies, consist of selling a futures contract, buying treasuries deliverable into that contract with repurchase agreement funding, and delivering them at contract expiry. According to Reuters, seven years ago, David Cameron left Downing Street after his big gamble to hold a referendum on Britain's membership of the European Union backfired and brought his six-year term as prime minister to an end. A few months later his political career appeared to be over as he resigned his seat in Parliament, with opponents blaming him for the defeat in the referendum in which he had campaigned for Remain, and Brexit supporters saying he had failed to implement a proper strategy to prepare for departure. According to Reuters, Manchester United's Rasmus Hoyland and Christian Eriksen have been withdrawn from the Denmark squad for their two upcoming Euro 2024 qualifying games. Hoyland left Saturday's 1-0 victory over Luton Town near the end of the game with a hamstring injury while Eriksen went off in the first half with a knee injury. Injury-riddled United were already without eight players for that game. According to Reuters, U.S. energy major ExxonMobil said on Monday it plans to start producing lithium by 2027 in Arkansas, amid growing demand for the metal used in electric vehicle batteries. Exxon's expansion into the sector comes as emerging technologies aim to boost global production of the ultralight metal by filtering it from salty brine deposits found across the globe and supplying it to battery makers eager for fresh sources. According to Reuters, Israeli firm Tower Semiconductor forecast a decline in quarterly revenue on Monday as chip firms faced with a supply glut continue to correct inventory. U.S. listed shares of the contract chipmaker were down nearly 6% in pre-market trading. According to Reuters, United Airlines will resume flights to Tel Aviv, Israel from Newark, New Jersey on November 24, a company spokesperson said. The airline was one of several to suspend or scale back flights to or from Tel Aviv after a surprise attack by Hamas militants last month and a threat of escalating conflict raised safety concerns. According to Bloomberg, De Beers plans to stockpile unsold diamonds after the world's biggest producer responded to plunging prices by allowing its buyers to refuse to purchase all the stones they're contracted to buy. We build up stocks of those because we are confident that over time the diamond price will increase and we will be able to sell that supply into the growing demand that we believe will come, Chief Executive Officer Al Cook said at a briefing in Gaborone. According to Reuters, after years of accelerating growth, Europe's electric car sales appear to be entering a go-slow zone as drivers wait for better, cheaper models that are two to three years down the road. Fully electric sales in Europe were up 47% in the first nine months of 2023, but instead of celebrating, automakers including Tesla, Volkswagen and Mercedes-Benz sounded a somber note. According to Bloomberg, 
Boeing Company opened the Dubai Air Show with a flurry of orders led by a whopping $52 billion wide-body commitment from Emirates Airline, while teasing the possibility of more as China moves closer to a major deal for the 737 MAX. Shares of the U.S. planemaker advanced 3.3% in pre-market U.S. trading after the world's largest international carrier said it would buy an additional 90 of Boeing's coming 777X model and five more 787s, confirming a Bloomberg News report. Emirates is already the biggest buyer of the massive twin-engine 777X, which sports wingtips that fold to make it easier to fit through airports. According to Reuters, Wall Street was set to open marginally lower on Monday as investors awaited a crucial inflation reading and other economic data this week that could shape expectations around how long the Federal Reserve will keep interest rates elevated. The benchmark SP500 in the blue chip Dow closed at near eight week highs on Friday, while the tech heavy Nasdaq composite hit a two month peak as megacap stocks rallied on the back of easing Treasury yields. According to Reuters, Donald Trump Jr. is set to testify again on Monday in his father's civil fraud trial, this time called by the defense to field questions about the former U.S. president's family real estate business. Donald Trump, the frontrunner for the 2024 Republican presidential nomination, is accused along with his two adult sons and ten of his companies of inflating his net worth by as much as $2.2 billion to secure better financing. According to Reuters, Energy firms BKV and Enlink Midstream said on Monday the first injection of carbon dioxide at a carbon capture and storage facility in Texas was completed ahead of schedule. The Barnett Zero CCS facility, to be used as a prototype for future projects, is expected to achieve an average sequestration rate of up to 210,000 metric tons of CO2 equivalent per year. According to Reuters, Toronto-based law firm Bennett Jones said on Monday that it had named Dominique Hussey as its chief executive officer and John Mercury as its executive chair. Jones and Hussey will take over their respective roles on January 1 from Hugh McKinnon, the firm's chair and CEO for the past 18 years, it said in an emailed statement. According to Bloomberg, Exxon Mobil Corp. plans to begin producing lithium in Arkansas marking an entry into the provision of a key component of large-scale batteries and the first time the oil giant has invested in a major non-fossil fuel extraction project in recent history. Exxon acquired rights to 120,000 acres in the Smackover Formation in southern Arkansas and plans to begin output of lithium by 2027, the spring, Texas-based company said in a statement Monday. The project will make Exxon a leading supplier for electric vehicles by 2030, it said. According to Bloomberg, the typical U.S. homebuyer earns more money and is more likely to pay cash this year. And, increasingly, she is a single woman. Facing limited home inventory, rising prices and high mortgage rates, house hunters were forced to increase their down payment. For first-time buyers, it reached 8% of the total price, the highest rate since 1997, according to the annual profile of home buyers and sellers report from the National Association of Realtors. According to Reuters, Slovakia's new government plans to raise multiple taxes, including on banks, to fund pension and other spending rises and slowly cut the eurozone's highest budget deficit under a program approved by the cabinet on Monday. Leftist Robert Fico became prime minister for the fourth time last month after winning an election in which he took aim at critical media, Western partners and liberal policies and pledged to end military support for Ukraine. According to Reuters, Mock Natural Resources said on Monday said it will buy certain oil and gas assets in the Anadarko Basin in Oklahoma from privately held Paloma Partners for $815 million in cash. Mock Natural said the assets have reserves of 31.5 million barrels of oil equivalent and will boost its existing output of about 65,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day by roughly 32,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day. According to Reuters, the tiny babies lie side by side, some wrapped in green fabric roughly taped around them for warmth, others wearing only nappies, a picture of vulnerability, their lives in grave danger with every minute that passes. The newborns are under the care of exhausted medics at Gaza's Al-Shifa hospital, which is besieged by Israeli tanks battling Hamas fighters, and lacks electricity, water, food, medicines and equipment. According to Bloomberg, China's credit growth was slower than expected in October, 
with a big jump in government bond sales to pay for stimulus compensating for weaker borrowing and a large contraction in shadow financing. October is historically a weak month for lending and credit, and the slowdown comes after relatively strong credit growth in September. An unseasonal jump in government bond sales is boosting credit, with 2.6 trillion yuan worth of new government debt sold in September and October to pay for stimulus and the PBOC releasing long-term liquidity into the financial system by cutting the reserve requirement ratio. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. Thanksgiving travel period is shaping up to be the busiest since 2019 with 55.4 million Americans expected to travel 50 miles or more from home, according to a forecast from the American Automobile Association. That makes for the third highest Thanksgiving travel in records going back to 2000. As many as 49.1 million Americans are expected to drive, an increase of 1.7% compared to 2022. Pump prices have fallen to an average of $3.39 a gallon in early November, more than 40 cents below the same time in 2022, AAA data show. According to Reuters, Chevron has resumed supply of natural gas from the offshore Tamar gas field to customers in Israel and the region, it said on Monday, after it was told by Israel's energy ministry to resume production. Output is expected to reach full capacity within a few days, industry sources said. According to Bloomberg, Argentina's final presidential debate showcased economy minister Sergio Massa relentlessly attacking the proposals of libertarian outsider Javier Malay, putting him on the defensive and letting the government candidate get away without having to explain specifics of his own plan. Before the definitive runoff election on November 19, Massa and Malay faced off on Sunday night with a new debate format that allowed for more sparring between the two than previous editions. That allowed Massa to continuously interrogate Malay with a yes or no format some of his rivals' most controversial proposals including closing the central bank, dollarize the economy and privatize education. According to Reuters, Mexico's central bank governor said in a newspaper interview published on Monday that easing inflationary pressure meant the Bank of Mexico could start looking at gradually cutting its key interest rate, but that it was unlikely to happen this year. Governor Victoria Rodriguez told newspaper El Financiero the bank would begin lowering rates once macroeconomic conditions allowed, noting, We do not see that for the rest of this year. According to Reuters, Canada's Magna International has reached a tentative agreement with Unifor, a company spokesperson said on Monday, the latest in a series of deals struck by North American labor unions following their tough stance over wages and working conditions. Both parties resumed talks last week after workers staged a walkout at the auto parts supplier's Integram seat manufacturing plant in Windsor, Ontario. According to Reuters, startup firms in the green technology industry are missing out on capital and need a new funding model, a senior JP Morgan banker said at a Reuters event in London on Monday. We need to build a funding model for green tech companies, Chuka Umana. JP Morgan's head of EMEA ESG and Green Economy Investment Banking, told the Reuters Energy Transition Europe 2023 event. According to Reuters, shares of U.S. medical device makers climbed in early trading on Monday as a potential hit from the cardiac benefits of Novo Nordisk's Wegovi were seen as more moderate than initially feared by investors. In our view, several bullets were dodged here, Jefferies analyst Matthew Taylor said in a note. According to Yahoo Finance, Amazon's retail business has reshaped the economy, workforce, and world as we know it, but now, robots are reshaping Amazon. Yahoo Finance's series next takes a look at these robots in action, from Proteus and Hercules, to Robin and Sparrow. These mechanical critters move thousands of pounds through warehouses, sort millions of packages for shipping, and even save on cardboard waste. According to Reuters, Red is a Romanian fighter pilot with hundreds of flight hours and countless air policing missions on the NATO state's now retired fleet of MiG-21 Lancer jets who will be flying Lockheed Martin F-16 planes as early as December. On Monday, he and six other Romanian pilots became the first trainees at a NATO military alliance-backed regional F-16 training hub which will also be available to all allies and partners, including Ukraine during its war with Russia. According to Reuters, a group of 39 Senate Republicans in a letter on Monday called on major U.S. banking regulators to withdraw a contentious proposal to significantly raise bank capital requirements, warning it could hinder lending and harm the economy. 
The Take According to Reuters, the U.S. Supreme Court on Monday asked President Joe Biden's administration for its views on whether the justices should take up the U.S. Soccer Federation's bid to bar a lawsuit accusing it of conspiring with FIFA to prohibit foreign teams from playing official matches in the United States. The justices are considering whether to hear U.S. soccer's appeal of a lower court's decision to allow the lawsuit by New York-based relevant sports to proceed. The lawsuit, filed in 2019 in Manhattan Federal Court against U.S. soccer and FIFA, claimed the ban violated American antitrust law and sought to stop the two organizations from implementing it. According to Yahoo Finance, Amazon's robotics operation has been more than a decade in the making, but every single robot it builds comes from one place, the company's Amazon robotics facility in Boston. The Boston location started its life as a Kiva facility. The Massachusetts-based company, founded in 2003, was acquired by Amazon for $775 million in 2012. The purchase kicked off Amazon's decade-long effort to become the leader in warehouse robotics. According to Reuters, David Cameron's appointment as British foreign minister may have raised eyebrows in EU capitals, but the bloc sees the return of the man who triggered the Brexit referendum more as a continued defrosting of relations than a lurch back to turbulent times. As prime minister, Cameron called the referendum on European Union membership in 2016, although he campaigned for Britain to remain in the EU. He quit hours after Britain voted narrowly to leave, vacating his parliamentary seat a couple of months later. According to Reuters, Israel's banking regulator told commercial banks to be cautious when issuing dividends and conducting share buybacks, citing the need to remain conservative and provide credit while the country was at war and the economy was set to slow. According to Reuters, weeks of hostilities across the Lebanese-Israeli border have escalated, with growing casualties on both sides and a war of words fueling concerns of a widening conflict between Israel and the Iran-backed Lebanese group Hezbollah. Israeli strikes killed two people in South Lebanon on Monday, according to a first responder organization affiliated to the Hezbollah-allied Amal movement. According to Reuters, Italy's biggest bank Intesa San Paolo reopened the deadline for thousands of its customers to opt out of switching to its digital lender EasyBank, a document showed, following protests from consumer associations and ruling lawmakers. The complaints prompted Italy's central bank as well as the antitrust authority to look into the way the lender was shifting the clients to the app-based unit. According to Yahoo Finance, Morgan Stanley's Mike Wilson sees stocks nearly flat in 2024. Wilson projects earnings growth in the SP500 to $229 per share, resulting in a year-end target for the benchmark index of 4,500. That target represents nearly 2% upside to current levels, well below the average yearly return of about 10% for the SP500. According to Yahoo Finance, gasoline prices are on a downward trend, with 11 states now averaging below $3 per gallon. The steady decline comes amid falling seasonal demand and use of less expensive winter-grade gas. Drivers in the following states are looking at average pump prices just under $3 per gallon. According to Reuters, Renault will reveal the launch of an additional affordable city electric car during this week's Capital Markets Day for its new EV unit Ampere, three sources familiar with the matter told Reuters. The move is part of French carmakers' efforts to reassure investors and push ahead with the stock market listing of its EV business, which has been complicated by weak demand for EVs and increased Chinese competition. According to Reuters, President Joe Biden's administration on Monday announced steps aimed at freeing up additional wireless spectrum for advanced technology needs and soaring U.S. wireless demand including by repurposing spectrum currently set aside for parts of the federal government. The White House said it was releasing a national spectrum strategy and a presidential memorandum to modernize U.S. spectrum policy that includes new actions to improve spectrum management and spectrum access, including a study of more than 2,700 megahertz of spectrum for potential repurposing. According to Reuters, Bain Capital is exploring a sale or initial public offering of varsity brands that could value the U.S. maker of sports uniforms and school yearbooks at more than $6 billion, including debt people familiar with the matter said. Bain has been interviewing investment banks to hire financial advisors that will help the private equity firm come up with a plan to cash out on its majority stake in varsity brands, the sources said.
According to Bloomberg, U.S. consumers' near-term inflation expectations dropped slightly in October and their outlook about their finances was mixed, according to a Federal Reserve Bank of New York survey. Median one-year-ahead inflation expectations dropped slightly last month to 3.6% from 3.7% in September, the New York Fed said Monday. Expectations for what inflation will be at the three-year horizon remain steady at 3% and the outlook for inflation in five years ticked down to 2.7% from 2.8%. According to Reuters, China's biggest lender, the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, has paid a ransom to cybercriminals who hacked the bank last week, a representative of the Lockbit ransomware gang said on Monday in a statement Reuters was unable to independently verify. The bank's U.S. arm was hit by a ransomware attack that disrupted trades in the U.S. Treasury market last Thursday. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. still faces a risk of a government shutdown at the end of this week despite a new compromise plan by Speaker Mike Johnson that leaves out hardline conservative priorities like cutting spending and curtailing migration. A shutdown would threaten a downward U.S. credit rating adjustment by Moody's Investor Service, which has cited political dysfunction as a growing risk to bond investors. A federal funding lapse would also have political repercussions for both parties. According to Bloomberg, PepsiCo Inc. is on course to take over as the biggest U.S. beverage company by market value, supplanting rival Coca-Cola Company, which has held the spot largely uninterrupted for the better part of two decades. That's according to Wall Street analysts including Kamil Gajrawala at Jefferies, who has initiated coverage of PepsiCo with a buy rating, calling it the sector's most durable business. He projects the shares will rise more than 20% over the next year to $203, for a market value of about $279 billion. That would top the roughly $277 billion market capitalization implied by his $64 target for Coca-Cola, which he rates a hold. According to Bloomberg, Villanova University in Pennsylvania is rescuing bondholders who own debt sold by Cabrini University a small Roman Catholic school that announced it would close in 2024 after struggling financially for years. Cabrini, which has about 1,600 enrolled students, announced in June that it would sell its campus to its large neighbor, Villanova University, which boasts nearly 7,000 undergraduate students. There were no details initially released on what the deal would mean for bondholders holding some $45 million in debt, and SP Global Ratings warned it could downgrade the school's bonds in light of the closure. According to Reuters, EU countries and lawmakers at the European Parliament are set to clinch a deal on rules to secure the supply of critical raw materials for the European Union, an EU official said on Monday. The European Commission proposed the Critical Raw Materials Act in March, seeking to ensure the EU's access to a secure, diversified, affordable and sustainable supply of critical raw materials crucial to the digital industry, the aerospace and defence sectors and the EU's green energy efforts. According to Bloomberg, the price of Trafagora Group shares rose 188% in its financial year to September, the latest sign of how commodity trading houses are reaping huge profits for the relatively small group of traders and executives who control many of the industry's biggest players. Trafagora executives were informed of the gain after the privately owned company concluded its most recent financial year at the end of September, according to people familiar with the matter, who asked not to be identified describing private information. The trading house is set to report its annual results in the coming weeks. According to Reuters, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen called on Pacific Rim finance ministers on Monday to boost the productive capacity of their economies while working to finance the transition to low-carbon energy and provide more opportunities for the poor. Opening a meeting of finance ministers of Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation countries, Yellen said the group's economic dynamism meant that the actions they take matter for addressing global challenges. According to Bloomberg, the Nasdaq's November rally is set to get an extra boost this week from investors front-running an ETF's option expiration. The $7.7 billion Global X Nasdaq 100 covered call ETF sells call options on the Nasdaq 100 to increase returns from the performance of shares in the index. Thanks to the technology benchmark's almost 10% rally since late October, the ETF's short position expiring Friday is now well below the index's current level, meaning the fund will need to buy thousands of futures contracts to cover. According to Reuters, 
shares of Boeing rose on Monday after a report said China was considering ending its freeze on purchases of the planemaker's best-selling 737 MAX aircraft after more than four years. This, coupled with bumper jet orders from Middle Eastern Airlines at the Dubai Airshow, sent Boeing shares up 4%. Supplier Spirit Aerosystems also rose 2.7%. According to Reuters, the United States is working hard to try to get a strong consensus leader's statement at this week's Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum Summit this week, the senior U.S. official for APEC, Matt Murray, told reporters on Monday. Leaders from the 21-member APEC Forum are due to gather in San Francisco from Wednesday until Friday. The wars in the Middle East and Ukraine have divided opinion among APEC members, making drafting a summit declaration difficult. According to Reuters, Fidelity launched a group of six new exchange-traded funds Monday and announced sharp reductions on management fees on nearly a third of its total ETF lineup, kicking off what analysts expect to be another strong week for ETF debuts. So far this year, asset managers have launched 419 ETFs, according to Morningstar Direct, taking 2023 a step closer toward breaking the 2021 record of 475 new ETFs. According to Reuters, Hyundai Motor said on Monday it will hike wages for non-union production workers at its Alabama factory by 25% by 2028, weeks after the United Auto Workers won new contracts with the Detroit three automakers. The Korean automaker joins Toyota Motor and Honda Motor in raising U.S. factory wages after the UAW won a new contract with General Motors, Ford Motor and Chrysler parent Stellantis that will result wage increases of 25% through 2028. The Detroit 3 wage hikes amount to 33% when expected cost of living adjustments are factored in. According to Reuters, investors are exiting exchange-traded funds that track medical technology and device firms due to growing concerns over the impact new weight loss drugs will have on their businesses. So far this month net outflows from the iShares U.S. Medical Devices ETF have been $32.5 million, LSCG Lipper data showed. According to Reuters, lawyers for a Russian artist who faces up to eight years in prison for replacing supermarket price tags with demands for an end to Moscow's war in Ukraine told a court on Monday their client would not survive a jail term and must be freed. Critics say the case of Alexandra Skochelenko, 33, is part of a crackdown on anyone who speaks out against Moscow's special military operation that has triggered nearly 20,000 detentions and over 800 criminal cases. According to Reuters, Amazon.com has cut around 180 jobs in its games division, at least the second round of cuts in under a week, as part of a broader restructuring, according to an email viewed on Monday by Reuters. After our initial restructuring in April, it became clear that we needed to focus our resources even more on the areas that are growing with the highest potential to drive our business forward, according to the email dated November 13 from Christoph Hartmann, vice president of Amazon Games. According to Reuters, France's cyber defense unit has unveiled a disinformation campaign emanating from Azerbaijan that aimed to undermine Paris's capacity to hold next year's Olympic Games, a report showed on Monday. According to the report seen by Reuters and other media, the campaign ran from late July on an account of an Azerbaijani individual on social media X, formerly Twitter, with links to the Azeri presidential party. According to Reuters, EU countries and lawmakers at the European Parliament on Monday clinched a deal on rules to secure the bloc's supply of critical raw materials ranging from aluminium to lithium, amid a race with the US and China. The European Commission proposed the Critical Raw Materials Act in March to ensure the EU's access to a secure, affordable and sustainable supply of raw materials crucial to the digital industry, aerospace and defence sectors, and the green energy push. According to Yahoo Finance, the world's major oil producers are pushing back against downbeat sentiment in the crude markets. OPEC's latest monthly oil report says, oil market fundamentals remain strong despite exaggerated negative sentiments. According to Reuters, the multi-billion dollar payments that Alphabet's Google makes to Apple, wireless carriers and others are normal competitive behavior and not an abuse of monopoly, an expert called by Google testified on Monday in a blockbuster antitrust trial. In what is expected to be the last week of trial, Kevin Murphy, who teaches at the University of Chicago Booth School of Business, argued Apple and others played Google and Microsoft, which has the Bing search engine, 
off against each other in order to win big payments from Google. According to Reuters, U.S. President Joe Biden's 2024 re-election team on Monday said former President Donald Trump had embraced the language of Nazi German dictator Adolf Hitler by using the word, vermin, to refer to his political enemies. Trump told a rally in New Hampshire on Saturday he would, root out the communists, Marxists, fascists and the radical left thugs that live like vermin within the confines of our country that lie and steal and cheat on elections, repeating his false claim that fraud cost him the 2020 presidential election. According to Bloomberg, Morgan Stanley economists forecast the Federal Reserve to make deep interest rate cuts over the next two years as inflation cools, while Goldman Sachs Group Inc. analysts expect fewer reductions and a later start. The central bank will start cutting rates in June 2024, then again in September and every meeting from the fourth quarter onward, each in 25 basis point increments, Morgan Stanley researchers led by chief U.S. economist Ellen Zentner said in their 2024 outlook on Sunday. That'll take the policy rate down to 2.375% by the end of 2025, they said. According to Reuters, Spanish builder Axe posted a nine-month net profit of 576 million euros on Monday, a 20% rise from last year, which beat market expectations, as it expanded projects in the United States and benefited from its toll road unit Aberdeen. Analysts on average expected the net profit to jump 15% to 552.67 million euros from the 480 million euros reported in the same period in 2022, according to LSEG estimates. They had forecast a slight adverse impact on earnings due to currency changes in both the US dollar and the Australian dollar. According to Bloomberg, drought has made the Panama Canal a choke point for the flow of the world's most important commodities. Oil's rally toward $100 a barrel has faced a setback, with some citing better than expected oil supplies. The corn harvest in the US, the world's top grower, is set to break a record. Coal output by the world's top greenhouse gas polluters takes an interesting turn. And palladium has tumbled to the lowest price in more than five years. Here are five notable charts to consider in commodity markets as the week gets underway. According to Bloomberg, Freepoint Commodities LLC has terminated an employee following an incident it described as anti-Semitic that went viral on social media. The video, which circulated over the weekend on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, shows a man hanging posters accusing Israel of apartheid and genocide, covering up signs of kidnapped Israelis. In the recording made by a bystander who identifies himself in the video as an American Jew, the person with the posters can be heard telling him to, go back, to his country. According to Reuters, the U.S. Treasury on Monday said the federal budget deficit in October shrank by nearly a quarter from a year earlier, as revenues climbed to a record for the month thanks to delayed tax payments from disaster-stricken areas that helped offset fast-rising interest costs. The Treasury Department said the deficit for the first month of fiscal 2024 fell by 24 percent to $67 billion versus $88 billion a year earlier. It was the smallest October deficit since 2017. Economists polled by Reuters had estimated the deficit would come in at $65 billion. According to Reuters, improving profit margins among U.S. companies are supporting a stronger-than-expected earnings season even as revenues top estimates at rates below the historical long-term average, according to Goldman Sachs strategists. With the vast majority of the SP500 having reported results, Third quarter margins rose to 11.6% from 11.1% in the second quarter, excluding the energy sector, according to the analysis by Goldman Sachs chief U.S. equity strategist David Costin and his team. According to Bloomberg, the Federal Reserve should stop cutting its bond holdings before a key liquidity facility is completely emptied so it can ensure that banks have sufficient reserves, according to Wrights and ICAP. There's uncertainty surrounding the level of reserves that the banking system needs before they become scarce and institutions rely more heavily on short-term funding markets. According to Bloomberg, Brazil is finally selling its first-ever sustainable bond, marking a long-awaited deal intended to support President Luis Inácio Lula da Silva's environmental and social agenda. Latin America's largest economy, which is home of 60% of the Amazon forest, plans to sell bonds due 2031, according to a filing Monday. Initial price talks are taking place at a yield of about 6.8%, 
according to a person familiar with the matter, who ask not to be identified because they're not authorized to speak about it. According to Bloomberg, a real estate investor facing scrutiny from lenders and investors is now the subject of a government inquiry into an offer to buy shares in WeWork Inc. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission has sent inquiries to Jonathan Larmore, the founder of Arcaterra Cuz, about a November 3rd press release in which an entity called Coal Capital Funds said it was seeking to buy shares in the co-working company at a significant premium, according to a person familiar with the matter who asked not to be named citing private information. The inquiry includes Larmore's trading history in WeWork stock and options, the person said. According to Bloomberg, the interest the U.S. pays on its debt soared in October from a year before, showcasing the rising cost to the government of higher yields on treasuries. Interest on the public debt was $88.9 billion in the first month of the fiscal year, up 87% from the figure in October 2022, Treasury Department data released Monday showed. According to Bloomberg, inflation in Argentina accelerated last month to its highest annual level since the country was exiting hyperinflation more than three decades ago, highlighting the dire state of the economy ahead of the presidential election later this week. Consumer prices rose 8.3% in October on a monthly basis, a notch below September's figure and less than the 9.45% median forecast of economists surveyed by Bloomberg. From a year ago, Annual inflation accelerated to 142.7%, according to official government data published Monday, also slightly below projections. According to Reuters, luxury sports car maker Ferrari said on Monday it would hire 250 people in the first six months of next year and announced programs for workers including a new share ownership plan and an enhanced bonus scheme. The announcement comes after workers' strikes halted operations at several North American plants of Stellantis, GM and Ford between September and October, and as Stellantis is reducing its workforce in Italy through voluntary redundancy plans. According to Bloomberg, after a federal law to curb surprise medical bills in the U.S. triggered a handful of the year's biggest bankruptcies, investors are eyeing corporate debt piles for potential pain ahead. KKR company-backed ambulance company Global Medical Response is in talks to push out some $4 billion of maturing debt in 2025, Bloomberg reported last month. Blackstone Inc.-backed staffing firm Team Health Inc., meanwhile, could face as much as $2.5 billion of debt due next year, and Radiology Partners Inc. has roughly $2 billion due over the next two years. According to Reuters, France's cyber defense unit has unveiled a disinformation campaign emanating from Azerbaijan that aimed to undermine Paris's capacity to hold next year's Olympic Games, a report showed on Monday. According to the report seen by Reuters and other media, the campaign ran from July 26 to 27 on an account of an Azerbaijani individual on social media X, formerly Twitter, with links to the Azeri presidential party. According to Bloomberg, NVIDIA Corp., the world's most valuable chipmaker, is updating its H100 artificial intelligence processor, adding more capabilities to a product that has fueled its dominance in the AI computing market. The new model, called the H200, will get the ability to use high bandwidth memory, or HBM3E, allowing it to better cope with the large datasets needed for developing and implementing AI, NVIDIA said Monday. Amazon.com Inc.'s AWS, Alphabet Inc.'s Google Cloud and Oracle Corpy's cloud infrastructure have all committed to using the new chip starting next year. According to Yahoo Finance, Ford and GM both suffered slight hiccups with UAW member votes on tentative contracts, but the automakers and the union are still cautiously optimistic the ratifications will happen. The UAW revealed members at Ford's Kentucky truck plant and Louisville assembly plant, where Ford's Super Duty trucks and full-size SUVs are assembled voted down the tentative agreement by a 54.5% and 50.4% no vote, respectively. However, skilled workers at both those plants overwhelmingly approved of the deal. According to Reuters, GMOLLC, the asset management firm co-founded by veteran investor Jeremy Grantham, will launch its first exchange-traded fund on Wednesday. The firm said it is rolling out the GMO US quality ETF seeking to tap into two big trends of 2023, intense investor interest in actively managed ETFs and in so-called high-quality stocks, are companies with high and stable profitability and strong balance sheets. 
Holdings in GMO's quality stock-focused mutual funds include companies like Microsoft, Johnson Johnson and Apple. According to Bloomberg, Vitor Escaria, a former chief of staff to Portugal's prime minister, will be released from custody after being held for six days as part of a probe into alleged government corruption and influence peddling. The decision was announced by a judge in Lisbon on Monday, CNN Portugal reported, citing a statement from the court. Escaria, who won't be able to leave the country, was among five people detained last week after police raided homes and government offices in an investigation related to lithium exploration concessions, a hydrogen project and a data center venture called Start Campus. According to Reuters, Boeing said on Monday it will increase Huntsville factory production capacity for sensors that are used to guide Patriot missiles to their targets to meet rising air and missile defense needs worldwide. The facility with increased production capacity, expected to be operational in early 2027, will enable Boeing to increase annual Pac-3 seeker production by more than 30 percent, the company said. According to Bloomberg, unionized Starbucks Corp. Baristas plan to hold their biggest strike yet this week, accusing the coffee giant of refusing to fairly negotiate at cafes that voted to organize. Thousands of employees at hundreds of sites will mount one-day work stoppages on Thursday, according to the union Starbucks Workers United. The strike is pegged to the company's Red Cup Day, a popular promotional event when Starbucks gives out holiday-themed reusable cups. The union says Starbucks has illegally refused to negotiate in good faith over issues including staffing and scheduling that are particularly onerous during such promotions. According to Bloomberg, Canadian legal software provider Di Durham Limited has hired Goldman Sachs Group Inc. and Canaccord Genuity Group Inc. to advise it on a potential sale of non-core assets, including its financial services division. The shares jumped. The Toronto-based company had been on an acquisition spree for several years, but has faced growing investor concerns about its leverage and pledged during a September analyst call to get it under control. The stock suffered a bruising 19% loss that day after it reported a larger-than-expected quarterly loss. According to Reuters, the White House said on Monday President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping will discuss strengthening communication and managing competition when they meet at the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in the San Francisco Bay Area on November 15. Biden believes there is no substitute for face-to-face -face diplomacy to manage this complex relationship, White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan told reporters. According to Reuters, a lawsuit filed on Monday accuses the Real Estate Board of New York and more than two dozen brokerages and companies of conspiring to artificially inflate commissions paid to agents who help sell residential real estate in Manhattan. The proposed class action against the Rebney Trade Group, the Corcoran Group, Douglas Elliman and others followed an October 31 verdict by a federal jury in Missouri awarding home sellers $1.78 billion, in a similar case against the National Association of Realtors and several brokerages. According to Yahoo Finance, Hollywood's double strike might be over, but that means studios will now have to pay up as new union contracts begin to take effect. We estimate the new contracts for writers, actors and directors will cost studios closer to the high end of our $450 million to $600 million yearly cost estimate, Moody's wrote in a new report released on Friday. According to Reuters, Swedish truckmaker Scania will switch to using steel made without carbon emissions in its heavy-duty vehicles before the end of the decade, it said on Monday. Scania, owned by Volkswagen's Traten, said it will publish on Tuesday a letter of intent to buy steel made without use of fossil fuels from Swedish metals maker SSAB from 2026, with deliveries gradually rising until 2030. According to Reuters, the armed wing of the Palestinian militant group Hamas said on Monday it told Qatari mediators the group was ready to release up to 70 women and children held in Gaza in return for a five-day truce with Israel. Last week there was an effort from the Qatari brothers to release the enemy captives from women and children, in return for the release of 200 Palestinian children and 75 women detained by the enemy, Abu Ubaida, the spokesman for the armed wing of Hamas, Al-Qassam Brigades, said in an audio recording posted on the group's Telegram channel. According to Reuters, U.S. corporate bond investors were focusing on companies deemed best able to withstand an economic downturn, 
according to a November survey by Bank of America which found 59% of those surveyed listing a potential mild recession as their top concern, up from 56% in its prior survey. Some 31% of survey participants saw a soft landing, slower but positive growth and lower inflation which translated to a relatively benign outlook for the U.S. economy in 2024. According to Yahoo Finance, the U.S. consumer will be in focus this week with a slew of retail earnings slated for release. And while the economic story of 2023 has largely been about resilience and better-than-expected spending, it hasn't translated to higher retail stocks across the board. According to Reuters, Democratic Senator Joe Manchin urged the U.S. Treasury on Monday to adopt the strictest possible standards to prevent Chinese-produced minerals or Chinese battery companies from winning electric vehicle tax credits. Manchin, who chairs the Senate Energy Committee, raised concerns in a letter to Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen about reports Chinese battery companies are actively pursuing business opportunities to take advantage of the credits, adding U.S. tax credits cannot be allowed to be hijacked by adversaries engaging in mineral laundering. According to Reuters, the U.S. Federal Reserve will hold off cutting rates until the fourth quarter of next year, according to Goldman Sachs economists who cited stronger-than-expected economic growth that is helping forestall a recession. So far this year, the U.S. economy has defied recession fears and made substantial progress toward a soft landing, Goldman's David Miracle and the firm's economics team said in a note dated on Sunday. According to Reuters, top U.S. Senate Democrat Chuck Schumer on Monday expressed tentative support for U.S. House Republicans' short-term funding bill that would keep the U.S. government open past this weekend. Any bill keeping government open past the current November 17 funding cliff will have to avoid pushing steep cuts and poison pills that hardline Republicans have demanded, he cautioned in a floor speech. He added that he was pleased that Speaker Johnson seems to be moving in another direction. According to Reuters, the Commerce Chiefs of the United States and China will meet at the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum this week, one of a series of cabinet-level engagements surrounding high-stakes talks between U.S. President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping. A U.S. Commerce Department spokesperson confirmed that U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo and Chinese Commerce Minister Wang Wentao planned to meet but was not able to provide details and timing. According to Reuters, with a mixed picture of consumer demand emerging over the past quarter, earnings results from Walmart and Target on Wednesday and Thursday respectively will shed light on what lies ahead for U.S. retailers ahead of Black Friday. After a turbulent holiday season last year, when inflation peaked, shoppers' focus on buying essentials like bread, milk and toothpaste, left retailers with lots of unsold clothing and electronics. Wall Street is hoping recent economic data showing food disinflation and higher wages will spur shoppers to open their wallets this season. According to Yahoo Finance, on Tuesday, investors will digest one of the most important data points the Federal Reserve will consider in its next interest rate decision, October's Consumer Price Index. The report, set for release at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, is expected to show headline inflation of 3.3%, a deceleration from September's 3.7% annual gain in prices, according to estimates from Bloomberg. Over the prior month, consumer prices are expected to have risen 0.1% in October, a slower clip than September's 0.4% monthly increase. According to Reuters, the SP500 closed Monday's session slightly lower as investors held their breath before a crucial inflation reading that could provide clues as to how long the U.S. Federal Reserve will keep interest rates elevated. After the indexes enjoyed a solid rally on Friday, the market turned its focus on Monday to consumer price index data, due out Tuesday morning. Economists expect a headline increase of 3.3% for October, easing from 3.7% in September but core prices are expected to be unchanged from the previous month. According to Reuters, Latvia's Air Baltic said on Monday it had placed an order for another 30 Airbus A220-300 passenger jets, along with options for another 20 as it targets 100 aircraft by 2030. According to Reuters, leaders from the United States and Indonesia were in discussions on Monday that will set the stage for U.S. President Joe Biden's first in-person meeting in a year with Chinese leader Xi Jinping. 
Biden greeted Indonesian President Joko Widodo at the White House as the two leaders prepare for an Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in San Francisco, where Washington hopes to reduce friction with Beijing. Biden is due to meet Xi on Wednesday. According to Bloomberg, a former Jane Street trader recruited by Sam Bankman fried to assist in FTX's charitable giving is fighting to get the rest of his 2022 bonus while denying that he had any knowledge of the fallen crypto mogul's fraud before the company collapsed last year. Ross Reingans Yu said in a Monday court filing that FTX owes him the remainder of his bonus, $275,000, after the firm paid him $375,000 about two months before the crypto exchange went bankrupt in November 2022. Reingans Yu also denied allegations leveled against him earlier this year by FTX's new management that he aided and abetted Bankman Freed's wrongdoing while working with the firm's charitable arm. According to Bloomberg, Blue Owl Capital Corp. 2 and FSKKR Capital Corp. are the latest business development companies to tap the U.S. investment-grade market as blue-chip firms front-load deals ahead of key inflation data and the seasonal holiday slowdown in the U.S. Blue Owl is raising $350 million to redeem an equal amount of bonds maturing in 2024 while FSKKR is borrowing $400 million to repay debt and for general corporate purposes, according to people with knowledge of the matter. Meanwhile, Oaktree Specialty Lending Corp. priced a $300 million deal to help reduce its outstanding debt in August. According to Reuters, the U.S. needs more natural gas pipeline capacity to maintain reliable gas supply during extreme cold weather, a trade group representing pipeline companies said on Monday in support of regulators who last week urged sought new rules to prevent a repetition of last winter's power outages. According to Reuters, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration said on Monday that Accord Healthcare has resumed manufacturing of commonly used cancer drugs cisplatin against the backdrop of ongoing drug shortages in the United States. Cisplatin is a type of chemotherapy drug used alone or in combination with other drugs to treat several advanced forms of cancer, including bladder, ovarian and testicular cancer. According to Reuters, United Auto Workers President Sean Fain will tell a Senate committee on Tuesday the union plans to aggressively organize non-union U.S. auto plants after winning new contracts with the Detroit Three Automakers. For decades, non-union auto companies have used fear, uncertainty, and division to break union drives in our industry, Fain will tell the Senate Health, Education, Labor and Pensions Committee, according to written testimony seen by Reuters. I'm here to promise you that those days are over. We are going to organize like we've never organized before. According to Yahoo Finance, Tyson Foods sees chicken as a bright spot as it looks to prevail through challenging macroeconomic conditions. In an exclusive interview, Tyson Foods CEO Donnie King told Yahoo Finance over the phone that historically, chicken is the place to be in challenging economic times, as consumers gravitate towards cheaper and healthier protein options. According to Reuters, chip technology design maker Imagination Technologies plans to lay off 20% of the company's staff, according to sources familiar with the matter. The UK-based company, which signed an agreement to supply Apple with chip technology in 2020, said it was cutting the staff because of a challenging business environment over the last 18 months, according to an internal message reviewed by Reuters. According to Bloomberg, Asia stocks were poised to open higher Tuesday, following small gains on Wall Street in a thin trading session as markets wait for the latest U.S. inflation figures and remarks from Federal Reserve speakers. Futures pointed to positive openings for share markets in Tokyo, Hong Kong and Australia. The SP500 closed near its key 4,400 mark Monday after posting nine positive days out of 10, a level of consistency last observed in 2021. Treasury 10-year yields dropped below 4.65%. The dollar fell. Oil topped $78 a barrel after notching three straight weeks of losses. According to Reuters, Jewel Labs said on Monday it has raised about $1.3 billion in funding, months after the e-cigarette maker revealed plans to lay off about 250 people in a bid to reduce its operating costs. The company has been seeking financing alternatives and cut jobs twice since last year, in a bid to protect its business as it deals with lawsuits related to the marketing of its e-cigarettes. According to Bloomberg, 
Walt Disney Co.'s The Marvels generated $47 million in U.S. and Canadian theater ticket sales this weekend, the lowest opening ever for the company's famous superhero franchise. The receipts compare with Box Office Pro's estimate of $35 million to $49 million and the studio's own forecast of around $60 million. Globally, the film brought in $110.3 million. According to Reuters, building solutions provider Johnson Controls warned of a delay in reporting its fourth quarter results due to a previously disclosed cybersecurity incident, sending its shares down 1.3% after the bell. The company now expects to report its fourth quarter and year-end results by December 14. According to Bloomberg, Goldman Sachs Group Inc. expects inflation in Australia and New Zealand to ease to a bit below 3% by late 2024, within the targets of both central banks and paving the way for reductions in interest rates. An easing in inflation of this magnitude would normally require a sharp deterioration in the labor market. Economists led by Andrew Boak wrote in Goldman's 2024 Outlook report published Tuesday. We continue to expect that Australia and New Zealand will achieve a soft landing in 2024. According to Bloomberg, private equity firms that amassed more than $1.5 trillion of assets in China in just two decades are now struggling to offload once promising investments they were counting on for hefty returns. With public markets in a slump and offering unattractive valuations, buyout firms are exploring private sales. But mounting concerns about the risks of investing in mainland China have left so-called secondary buyers demanding discounts of 30% to more than 60%, according to people familiar with the market. Haircuts in Europe and the US are closer to 15%. According to Bloomberg, JBS Saw, the world's largest meat producer, posted third-quarter profit that missed analysts' estimates as earnings from its North American beef business tumbled. Adjusted profit from JBS's North American beef unit, the company's largest business, plunged almost 80% from a year earlier as profit margins narrowed, JBS said Monday in a statement. That undercut results for the Brazilian company, which posted adjusted earnings before items of $5.41 billion reis, a 43% drop from the year earlier period. Results missed the 5.49 billion real average estimate of analysts surveyed by Bloomberg. According to Reuters, Nvidia on Monday added new features to its top of the line chip for artificial intelligence, saying the new offering will start to roll out next year with Amazon.com, Alphabet's Google, and Oracle. The H200, as the chip is called, will overtake Nvidia's current top H100 chip. The primary upgrade is more high bandwidth memory one of the costliest parts of the chip that defines how much data it can process quickly. According to Reuters, electric air taxis could be transporting passengers from JFK Airport to downtown Manhattan by 2025 on quiet, emissions-free journeys that take around seven minutes. Manufacturer Joby Aviation carried out an exhibition flight at the downtown Manhattan heliport in New York on Sunday the city's first-ever electric air taxi flight and the first time Joby has flown in an urban setting. According to Bloomberg, Australia's consumer confidence slumped in November following the Reserve Bank's resumption of interest rate increases, as households hunkered down amid concerns of further tightening to come. Sentiment declined 2.6% to 79.9 points, with pessimists still heavily outweighing optimists given a reading of 100 as the dividing line, a Westpac banking corp survey showed Tuesday. The index has held in a 78 to 86 range for the past year. According to Reuters, Australian charging company Jolt, which has received backing from US fund manager BlackRock, said on Tuesday it is rolling out on street EV chargers in London as parts of plans to install 5,000 chargers in Britain over the next three to five years. Jolt is rolling out chargers in the London borough of Barnet and CEO Doug McNamee said the company was in talks to do the same in other boroughs. Barnet has received a £2.1 million government grant for EV charging infrastructure. According to Reuters, having failed to find his dream job at a Chinese internet company upon graduation, Peter Liu settled for a role in a state library where there is so little need for his participation that he spends his time studying for a change in his career path. It's really hard to get work at big companies, said the 24-year-old who majored in TV production at a Beijing university before moving back home in the central Henan province. According to Reuters, Finality, 
a blockchain-based wholesale payments firm, said on Tuesday it has raised £77.7 .7 million in a second round of funding backed by Goldman Sachs and other blue-chip financial firms as it awaits Bank of England approval to start operations. UK-based Finality seeks to bridge the gap between mainstream and digital finance to cut the time and cost of settling, managing collateral and making payments for financial market transactions. According to Reuters, the Workers' United Union said on Monday that thousands of employees at hundreds of Starbucks stores will walk out on the coffee chain's key Red Cup Day promotional event this week, citing staffing and scheduling issues. Starbucks hands out free reusable holiday-themed cups with coffee purchases on the popular promotional event Red Cup Day, which falls on Thursday this week, in the midst of the key holiday season. According to Bloomberg, Uber Technologies Inc. is launching a mini-pilot program for a TaskRabbit-like service that will let app users hire people to complete various household tasks, part of an effort by the ride-hailing company to expand beyond driving and deliveries. During the initial test of the program, Drivers and couriers on Uber's app can opt in to help customers with small home projects, including furniture assembly, in-home laundry and lawn mowing, the company said Monday. According to Reuters, Rivian Automotive plans to raise nearly $15 billion in debt to help build an electric vehicle manufacturing plant in Georgia, the EV maker said on Monday. The taxable bonds would be issued by the Georgia Department of Economic Development and the Joint Development Authority of Jasper, Morgan, Newton and Walton counties, according to an agreement on November 9, it said in a securities filing, adding that Rivian has agreed to purchase bonds as they are issued. According to Reuters, a federal judge on Monday allowed the majority of claims to move forward in sprawling litigation that claims chemical hair relaxer products made by L'Oreal USA. Revlon and others cause cancer and other injuries. Illinois-based U.S. District Judge Mary Rowland denied most of the company's arguments in their motion to dismiss the complaint in the multi-district litigation over the products. The litigation includes more than 8,000 lawsuits. According to Yahoo Finance, Plug Power CEO Andy Marsh brushed aside Wall Street concerns about the hydrogen fuel cell developer's future after Plug stock plunged over the company's going concern warning. We feel pretty confident when we look at everything, Marsh told Yahoo Finance. When we look at our ability to manage through this, we're going to be fine. We're talking to folks about opportunities to raise cash much larger than what we need. And we're just trying to do it prudently so that our investors are in a good position in the long run. According to Reuters, the battered yen was stuck near a three-decade low against the dollar on Tuesday struggling to find a floor as the Bank of Japan's ultra-easy monetary policy settings remained at odds with the prospect of higher for longer rates elsewhere. The Japanese currency similarly slumped to a 15-year low of 162.38 per euro in early Asia trade and slid to a roughly three-month trough of 186.25 per British pound. According to Reuters, Russia's SAT-controlled arms exporter Rosoberwan Export is discussing with Indian Enterprises the joint production of aircraft weapons for the Indian Air Force, Russia's Ria State News Agency reporter early on Tuesday. Rosoberwan Export is working with Indian private and public enterprises to organize joint production of aviation weapons and integrate them into the existing aviation fleet in India, Ria cited Rosoberwan Export's General Director Alexander Mikhaev as saying. According to Bloomberg, Within days of a cyber attack at its U.S. unit, members of Industrial Commercial Bank of China Limited's management were on a plane. Officials from the world's largest lender arrived in the U.S. over the weekend in a hastily arranged trip to limit fallout from the incident last week, people with knowledge of the situation said. As they sought to calm markets through a steady stream of discussions and calls, one question remained unanswered. When will the stricken systems start functioning again? According to Reuters, Oil prices inched up on Tuesday after an OPEC report said market fundamentals remained strong and due to concerns supplies might be disrupted as the U.S. cracks down on Russian oil exports. Brent crude futures rose 33 cents, or 0.4 percent, to $82.85 a barrel by 0113 G.M.T. U.S. WTI crude futures were also up 33 cents, or 0.4 percent, at $78.59 a barrel. According to Bloomberg, Japan's economy likely shrank over the summer as the impact of trade weighed on the nation's sputtering recovery, 
a result that would support continued caution at the central bank and the government's case for its latest round of stimulus measures. Economists estimate that real gross domestic product shrank at an annualized pace of 0.4% in the three months through September, compared with 4.8% growth in the previous quarter. According to Reuters, top business leaders in the United States are expected to dine with Chinese President Xi Jinping in San Francisco on Wednesday as he seeks to court American companies and counter his country's recent struggles to entice foreign investment. The dinner on the margins of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum will follow a day of talks between Xi and U.S. President Joe Biden, aimed at stabilizing fraught ties between the world's two largest economies. According to Reuters, Taiwan is working on securing a one-on-one -on -one meeting with U.S. President Joe Biden and the island's representative at this week's APEC summit in San Francisco, but there is no message planned for China, a senior Taiwanese official said. Chinese claimed and democratically ruled Taiwan, which takes part in the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum as Chinese Taipei, and does not send its president to summits, has faced increased military pressure from Beijing, including two rounds of major war games during the past year and a half. According to Reuters, former U.S. President Donald Trump's social media platform Truth Social has lost $73 million since its launch in early 2022 a securities filing by Digital World Acquisition Corp., the SPAC that plans to merge with the company, showed on Monday. Trump had announced the launch of his social media app in October 2021, saying it would stand up to big tech companies such as Twitter and Facebook that previously barred him. According to Reuters, the European Central Bank will hold interest rates steady well into next year with a majority of economists polled by Reuters sticking to forecasts the first cut will have to wait until at least July despite expectations of a eurozone recession. Last month, the ECB left its deposit rate at a record high of 4.00% after raising rates for 10 consecutive meetings, and all 72 economists in a Reuters November 8-13 poll agreed there would be no more hikes in the current cycle. According to Reuters, the Philippine Central Bank will keep its key interest rate unchanged at 6.50% on Thursday after an off-cycle 25 basis point hike on October 26, according to a Reuters poll of economists who were split on the likelihood of another hike in December. Banco Central ng Pilipinas Governor Eli Remolona said that last month's surprise hike was to catch up on its monetary policy response and that rates would stay higher for longer until a sustained downward trend in inflation becomes evident. According to Reuters, Asian shares inched up on Tuesday in cautious trading ahead of a crucial U.S. inflation report that could heavily influence the Federal Reserve's policy outlook, while the fragile yen flirted with one-year lows, putting it back in the intervention zone. Mischi's broadest index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan was 0.49% higher, while Tokyo's Nikkei gained 0.36%. Australia's SP, ASX 200 index was up 0.61%. According to Reuters, a new Australian law will toughen restrictions on how industries and universities share defence technology with foreigners, while exempting a UK-US partners Britain and the United States from such controls, a draft of the measure shows. The law is meant to replicate US export controls to defence technology seen as a key step to beginning the AUK-US plan to build a new class of nuclear-powered submarine in Australia and Britain. According to Reuters, Canadian Miner Tech Resources is in advanced talks to sell its coal assets to Glencore, the Wall Street Journal reported on Monday. The deal would value the business at close to $10 billion and could be announced as soon as this week, the report said, citing people familiar with the matter. According to Bloomberg, Traders are hoping that the planned meeting between President Joe Biden and China's Xi Jinping will provide a sign of thawing relations, and boost sentiment for the Asian nation's beaten-down assets. Wednesday's meeting in San Francisco will mark a crucial moment in what is Xi's first visit to the U.S. since 2017, when he met with the then-President Donald Trump. It will also be his first conversation in a year with Biden who largely kept intact the tariffs Trump imposed on a range of Chinese goods and also championed curbs on China's access to advanced technology. According to Reuters, Japan's Nikkei share average rose on Tuesday amid expectations that domestic firms would continue posting solid outlook, with the yen hovering near a three-decade low against the dollar.
The Nikkei had risen 0.53% to 32,757.44 by the midday break, while the broader Topix was up 0.5% to 2,348.38. According to Bloomberg, Hebei Gelic New Energy Science Technology Company is considering a Hong Kong initial public offering as early as next year after shelving previous plans for a listing in mainland China, according to people familiar with the matter. The Chinese battery firm backed by BYD Company has held initial talks with potential advisors for the share sale, the people said, asking not to be identified because the matter is private. An offering could raise at least a couple of hundred million dollars and value Gelic at about two billion dollars, the people said. According to Bloomberg, China's equity margin debt is climbing even as short selling continues to decline, a disparity caused by two different regulatory moves both aimed at reviving its slumping market. The total outstanding margin balance in Shanghai and Shenzhen has risen to the highest since April 2022. Leveraged positions are on track for a third straight month of increase after the securities watchdog lowered the deposit ratio for such trading. According to Bloomberg, Oil rose for a fourth day, the longest run of gains in more than two months, on signs the demand outlook may not be as bad as previously feared. West Texas Intermediate traded near $78 a barrel, and is up more than 4% since last Wednesday's close. Global benchmark Brent was close to $83. Demand is robust, and overblown negative sentiment has been dominating the market, OPEC said in a monthly report on Monday. The American Automobile Association said the U.S. Thanksgiving travel period will be the busiest since 2019. According to Reuters, U.S. electric car maker Tesla Inc. is planning to double the number of components it imports from India, Indian Trade Minister Payesh Goyal said on Tuesday through a post on social media platform X, proud to see the growing importance of auto component suppliers from India in the Tesla EV supply chain. It is on its way to double its components imports from India. Goyle posted on X, earlier called Twitter, after visiting Tesla's manufacturing facility at Fremont, California. According to Reuters, Indonesia's trade surplus is seen to narrow slightly in October to $3 billion from the previous month, as exports are still expected to weaken, a Reuters poll showed on Tuesday. The poll, conducted with 19 economists between November 8 and November 14, showed trade surplus of $3 billion last month, compared with $3.42 billion in September. According to Reuters, Amazon has reached a deal with Snap that will let people buy its products directly from ads on the Snapchat app, the information reported on Monday, a week after the e-commerce giant struck a similar partnership with Facebook owner Meta Platforms. The Snapchat advertisement deal, currently being rolled out to customers in the U.S., will allow users to buy products from Amazon.com without leaving the social media app, the information added. It would also show them real-time pricing, prime eligibility and delivery estimates, the report said, citing an Amazon spokesperson. According to Reuters, New Zealand Prime Minister-elect Christopher Luxon will not attend APEC in San Francisco and instead the country's caretaker trade minister will represent the country, the political parties confirmed on Tuesday. A spokesperson for the caretaker government said Damien O'Connor, who remains the country's trade minister until a new government is sworn in, will attend the APEC meeting on behalf of the government this week. According to Reuters, the Bank of Japan is expected to end its negative interest rate policy in April and keep raising short-term borrowing costs next year on heightening prospects of sustained wage growth, its former top economist Hideo Hayakawa said on Tuesday. With inflation already exceeding the BOJ's 2% target for more than a year, the central bank tweaked yield curve control in October to allow long-term rates to rise more, a move seen by markets as a step toward phasing out its huge stimulus. According to Bloomberg, Barings LLC is preparing to launch an Australian private credit fund, seeking to provide an alternative funding source beyond banks in the bond market, an executive at the investment company said. The fund hopes to raise 1.4 billion Australian dollars from institutional and high net worth investors in the next 12 to 18 months that will be lent to Australian corporate borrowers, Shane Forster, head of the firm's Asia-Pacific Private Finance Group in Hong Kong, said in an interview. 